I think for people to appreciate the disturbances, first we have to understand the system. We have to understand what are lipids, um, how our body transports these, and what the purpose of that system is. So perhaps we can start there. Yeah, you absolutely have to start there because the lipids, I, I mean, how many times have I said that in my life? But many of the average layman may not even know what a lipid is if he was asked on the street, hey, what's a lipid? Uh, so a lipid is basically an organic molecule. Organic molecule means it's carbon and hydrogen atoms that are all stuck together in various configurations. But it's an organic molecule that is not soluble in water. So, and the simplest thing is, hey, take olive oil, take a glass of water, pour it together, and the olive oil doesn't freely mix. My joke is, hey, if I did doers in water, scotch in water, <laughs> they're very miscible. You couldn't, there's no droplets in that glass. So lipids are not soluble. And this presents, so any molecule that is not soluble in water is under the lipid classification. Now it's a family of a lot of different molecules. And the ones we're going to spend most of the, the time on in our podcast are going to be sterols. And the most common sterol is cholesterol. And then the fatty acids and the fatty acids usually are part of a lipid called phospholipids or triacylglycerol, triglycerides. So those are mostly the lipids that we're going to be talking about. How in the world are they related to cardiovascular risk or uh, atherogenesis, the buildup of plaque? So that's what lipids are. And with that simple introduction, here's the whole darn dilemma. There's no human life without lipids. We need fatty acids for energy. We absolutely need cholesterol for our cell membranes. They provide integrity and the ability for membranes to signal no cholesterol, no cell membranes, no cells, no podcast tonight if you and I weren't constructed of cells. So cholesterol also is a precursor to several hormones that are necessary for life. And cholesterol is the substance from which the liver makes bile acids. And if it didn't make them, we couldn't absorb anything and we'd be in a bad way too. So cholesterol is so crucial that evolution knew we have to give every cell in the body the ability to manufacture, synthesize cholesterol. And we also have to maybe develop a lipid transportation system that could track lipids, the energy carrying lipids like triglycerides, uh, and even cholesterol, if needed, to a tissue that says, hey, I need cholesterol, it has to go from where cholesterol is being produced to somebody who wants to use it. And that is the problem, because plasma is our vehicle, how we transport things in the human body. And plasma is pretty much a total aqueous water solution. So if the liver or any other tissue is making lipids, it just can't dump them in the plasma, no more than you can pour olive oil in that glass of water. So evolution, which solves a lot of problems, said way early, whenever it started and whatever species it started, we have to develop a lipid transportation system for humans so lipids can go here, there, and everywhere, or perhaps brought back to an organ that can get rid of excess lipids that are not needed. So all that was necessary was the chemistry realization that if you stick lipids on a protein, proteins for the most part are water-soluble, if I have a collection of lipids bound to a protein, that is a lipid transportation vehicle. And obviously you would call that a lipoprotein because it consists of lipids and a protein or more than one protein. So our body was given the ability to produce lipid carrying molecules called a lipoprotein. And two organs were blessed with the ability to make lipoproteins, our intestine, because as you can imagine, we're absorbing lipids from the gut lumen and into the intestine. But for the intestine to send those lipids to where they might be needed, it has to wrap them with a protein and then secrete that protein into the systemic circulation. So the intestine can make a lipoprotein. And the only other organ that can make a lipoprotein is basically our master <laughs> chemical control system called the liver, which like, makes everything we pretty much need in the body. So if the liver can take collections of lipids, wrap it with a protein and secrete it into the plasma. So here, all of a sudden, we've got these spherical large particles carrying various uh, lipid components, and they can go and bring lipids to 
whatever cell might need them. And if that cell needs a lipid, it would upregulate a receptor that internalizes the lipoprotein with its content. But equally important is if a cell had too much lipids, and look, too many fatty acids, <laughs> inflammation, if it's the liver, fatty liver, too much cholesterol in any cell in your body will crystallize and kill that cell. So once a cell has above a very slight threshold of cellular cholesterol, it has to get rid of it. Now that cell just can't pump it out into the blood. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. it has to pump it out into a lipid carrying vehicle and that would be a lipoprotein. So cells that have excess lipids can say, hey, Mr. Lipoprotein, please take this from me and please take it to somewhere that can use it or eliminate it from the body. So lipids, cholesterol and triglycerides that I have spoken about are trafficked within these little circulating fat protein and wrapped fat balls called lipoproteins. But lipoproteins take lipids in a forward direction from the intestine or liver to various cells or in a reverse direction from cells back to the liver and say, you deal with it. Uh, and the liver is very skilled at handling excess lipids, eliminating them or changing them into other things. There could be some side uh, trips if a lipoprotein is carrying triglycerides, which is basically a, a form of energy because there's three fatty acids on it, which if oxidized will create ATP, that lipoprotein could stop at a triglyceride storage organ called adipocytes. Our fat cells would say, oh, I'm happy to take some of the triglycerides and I'll keep them here until uh, uh, the body needs them again and then I'll release them. And uh, you could, a lipoprotein could bring, especially cholesterol, not triglycerides, to those steroidogenic organs I talked about. Uh, cholesterol being a precursor to several hormones. So the adrenal cortex sometimes needs cholesterol from a lipoprotein. Our uh, gonads sometimes needs cholesterol from a lipoprotein to synthesize the various things they're doing. So you can see lipoproteins, it's the lipid transportation system, and there could be several pit stops along the way. As we get into this, what's fun is what makes a lipoprotein go there, 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 and it's all regulated by a variety of enzymes and receptors. It's such a fascinating little system we have, but it's basically the lipid transportation system. And my famous words, I've said it a million times, lipids go nowhere in the human body unless a lipoprotein brings them there. Of course, unless the cell is synthesizing its own lipids, but, uh, and that happens pretty much with cholesterol, but not so much. Only a few organs can synthesize triglycerides. Trigs have to be delivered to the organs that need energy.